Yeah. All right, it's um, 6.01 and I think we can see everyone. We know that um, Brenda is actually Tony. <laughs> and we have one person joining just as a phone number, which is 802-234-9670. Would you like to identify yourself so we know who was all in the meeting? Sure. This is Kirk White. Kirk White. All right. Great. Thank you. And we got no more. So we'll, um, it's 601 and I will read our, our, beginning little diatribe that as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Thank you. Um, in accordance with act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, however, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing access to the meeting with the Zoom platform and all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired, participate in this meeting. And you can Find out how to join by either going to the town website, looking at the posted minutes around the town or asking to be put on a direct email list that will give you um, that information. So um, it's, uh, that's that. And we're going to, before our regular select board meeting, we're having a, um, a final public hearing for the Rochester Bellamont Trail Grant. And I will, um, I guess we'll open that, that hearing and I'll ask um, um, Kimberly and Angus and RJ are here to, to speak on that. So take it away. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll speak on. Basically, does anyone? Yeah. Sorry, Dan, didn't mean Go to cut you off. Okay, so I'm uh, Kimberly Gilbert. I'm a regional planner at uh, your regional planning commission, the Two Rivers Attaquichi Regional Commission. And I did the grant administration for this project, the Vellamont Trail CDBG grant. Um, and this is where the, the town of Rochester received $60,000 from the state of Vermont um, under the Vermont Community Development Program. So if you're not familiar with that program, uh, the Vermont Community Development Program is a state program that assists communities on a competitive basis, um, providing financial and technical assistance um, to identify local needs. And they do that in the areas of housing, economic development, public facilities, public services, and handicapped accessibility modifications. And this is a program that any Vermont town um, other than Burlington is eligible to apply to. Um, and so uh, it's, it's often um, a project that involves uh, a, a lot of people. So it's not just the town, it's a coordinated effort between municipalities, community groups, um, local or state nonprofit groups, organizations, businesses. And that was, that was true in this case, we had a, a lot of involvement from some different players. So um, I did grant administration Grammy. from leaders. the town of Rochester was involved. Um, we've got uh, Angus and RJ who are sitting in on this call today. Um, Angus from, from Rasta and RJ from the Vermont Huts Association. Um, um, who is RJ? Could you just tell me this name? I'm, I'm Martha Slater. I work for the Herald. I just want to write down the name. RJ? Yeah. RJ McCusker? Nope. RJ Thompson. Oh, I'm okay, so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, RJ. Totally. <laughs> they blend. So T Thompson, right? Thompson. Blended. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse me for interrupting. We're, um, we're brothers. We're brothers. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. just Oh, and you look so much alike, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, RJ and Angus. Um, so, a, a great group here. Um, SC Group was the consultant. There were architects involved, U.S. Forest Service staff, Catamount Trails Association volunteers, lots of people. Um, and with this funding, those involved were able to 
identify location path of the Vermont trail and hut locations, create trail plans and cost estimates for the trail and hut infrastructure, and conduct an economic impact study um, to prove the project's feasibility and relevance to the surrounding communities. And that also uh, estimated the anticipated spending patterns of the people who would use the trail. And if, if you're here from seeing our newspaper notice, then hopefully you had a chance to um, see that link where we posted that the study where you could actually go access it and look at all that, um, the results of this project. If you didn't, I'll go ahead and paste that link into the um, Zoom chat here now. But um, that's, that's everything I wanted to say from kind of the, the admin standpoint. Um, and I can pass it back off to Dune if you wanted to open for public comments or questions at this point. Yeah, thank you, Kimberly. There's, um, there are, anyone have any questions for Kimberly, Angus, RJ, or some comments? Good job, I guess that's my comment. <laughs> So, oh, I do have a question. Um, when does this um, grant, um, um, when do we find out whether we got the grant or not? Or, um... Yeah, so this is the, the closeout hearing. The grant was awarded and was implemented oh. successfully and, and everything's wrapped up now. So um, this, yep, is a, a chance for anyone to comment on how that process went, what they- Okay, thank you. Them program overall um, but yeah it was we've already it. gotten it but then i thought well this is weird okay and we're having a hearing out okay <laughs> yeah yeah just to close that hearing but um Thank it was you. a competitive grant so that was uh pretty awesome that this project was chosen at, you know out of so many it's a what, fairly what large grant too isn't it 60. what was the question it's a fairly large grant is that correct it was a $60,000 grant. When do we anticipate uh, seeing some uh, physical trail work taking place? Yeah, um, this is Angus. So we, the planning grant doesn't administer any grant fund for trail building construction, but it did allow us to plan and get approval um, for trail construction. Um, and we've gotten a separate unrelated note uh, northern border region commission grant um to actually implement start implementing some of the trail um with match match fund raise too um and that hopefully um could potentially start um this summer spring oh. summer um so i can provide more details on where the construction you know this is all for service um approved part of the robinson uh, integrated resource project um so yep thank you Andy. well then anyone else says anything they want to add or if, that, if that's it um thank you guys for coming and in some um, called this um this public hearing ended and moved to open and the regularly scheduled select board meeting, then you have to. So at this point, does anyone have any additions to the agenda for the select board meeting? Um, Dune, it's Martha. I just have a, a quick comment, um, if that's okay. Sure. Um, I, I just received today when I got my mail, I just received the town report and I wanted to compliment Nancy Woolley on the beautiful job she did, how gorgeous all the photos were and how nicely put together it was as usual. Thank you. I know it's a lot of work. Thank you. June, I'd like to comment also and say that if it had not been for Norm Christensen, that all that beauty would not have been there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I didn't, I forgot yeah. about your partner in crime. My partner in crime. All right. Um, what, mentioned was the fact that this was not just your standard run of the mill. There was a lot of uh, adjustments and retrofitting that Nancy had to do um, to make this year <laughs> unique from all the other years. So yeah. thank you for that. But we all did it. 
uh, doing for the agenda, I'd just like to comment and, and share some information about a possible grant for a generator for the uh, town office building. Amendment. Okay. June, are you there? I am. It is Robert. Yep. Uh, oh, yep. Do you have something you'd like to add to the agenda? Yeah, there are a number of questions and concerns. Um, number one, I want to make certain that everyone that attends the Zoom meetings is responsible for their comments, whether it's their dog barking or vulgar language in their commentary. So I would recommend that everyone be careful of uh, what they say behind the scenes because there have been comments made and we traced to whom those comments were made by and it was totally not appropriate. Uh, the second thing I wanna uh, comment on is the access to these Zoom meetings. Zoom is owned by the Chinese government. I just, I'm gonna put that out to everybody. I think the platform should be changed to Microsoft's platform, which is much safer. And I also recommend that the ease of access to these Zoom meetings should be much easier. I was on your website. So, so Robert, Robert, hold on for a second. Right now we're just um, taking amendments to the agenda and then we can address these amendments further on in the meeting. So we'll add those those topics to the agenda. Well, there are a number of there are, there are, there are a number a number of other uh, uh, you should know how to turn. I don't know. Um, so there's been a 10 line item message okay. sent to Jenny Prosner at the state house today, mm -hmm. trying to answer my questions regarding, I, I'm sorry to bring it up again, but the board of civil authority of Rochester, the access to zoom meeting, zoom meetings that some special meetings are recorded and others are not. So, okay, in the so we'll put that uh, on the agenda. And is there anything else uh, uh, you want to okay. put on the agenda? We've got the, the Zoom platform itself. We've got the BCA meetings and people being responsible for their house. You want to add to the agenda? Uh, the, the law of Vermont, which is the open meeting laws. And unfortunately, there's some uh, discrepancy there with regards to Rochester's performance. All right. Is that? Um, I okay. think that would. I think um, that would cover it. Was your amendment? All right. Okay. So we've got those. Anyone else have any other additions to the agenda they'd like to make? Soon. <coughs> yes. I'd like Julie. to add that um, for the ballots. I'd just like to just uh, make an announcement about the ballots. Okay. And I'd like to also add an item um, regarding the um, um, the uh, logistics of dealing with the shoveling or clearing of the sidewalks in town. So we'll add that. Um, so um, now I'll move on to the minutes from the um, last meeting of January 25th. And I it looked to me like they were um, appropriate. I saw um, one thing missing that, uh, again, to Robert Franks, um, that um, there was a statement provided by Robert that Pat read, which it says is attached, but I didn't find that attached on the minutes that I got. So I guess we should add that statement to the minutes. Well, I June, June, can I interrupt for just a moment? These are um, the, uh, this is the rocky road of this, um, non-meeting in the town clerk's office uh, and sitting there and everyone gets everything true. And these are the problems. Well, so we that's, why we're, um, that's why we're addressing the minutes right now. So I um, think that's, that's, that's I, very, I did get those minutes. I did get those? Yes, I did. They're on the very bottom. It's like page three on the, well, on the minutes. Well, Dune's the chair of the select board of Rochester. And, and, and he we doesn't did have the minutes. 
the very first the very no. first time I posted I them, they did not have it. I did go oh, back. No, you're right. I, I yeah. So I, I see it. It is down there farther. I didn't see that. Okay. So well, Robert, the, the, there's um your comments did make it to the minutes. Well, it's not about my comments. I'm just saying that we all have to understand that this COVID protected Zoom meeting is very bumpy. It's a rocky road and communication isn't isn't really consistent. Because well, um, well so far the minutes, so far so. it's it's doing pretty good, actually. Yeah. Pat, you had something you want to say? Well, at this point in time Go we're approving the minutes from the last meeting that's where we are in our meeting so we're keeping our meeting very structured and let's stay to the point so i have read the meeting minutes from our last meeting and i see no adjustments or corrections well i i might add something to that patty is that uh thank you for or martha you're very gracious and pro professional in what you do and it was very kind of you to mention my thank you to the town of Rochester. The reason I'm saying that is my concern for election day. Uh, thank God on November 2nd, the Board of Civil Authority- hey, Robert, Robert, you're, you're, you're derailing um, the flow here. Right now, the topic is approving the minutes of the last meeting. So let's take care of that first. And you're, well, you're getting- Well, obviously you're not, you're, not, you're not listening. Well, you were went on to complimenting Martha about her reporting and and we're talking about the actual minutes. And do you have a, a complaint about what is in those minutes? Or well, in addition to not, not in those minutes? Not just in the minutes, but in the okay. newspaper because the, right. the Board of Civil Authority was thanked for their hard work, but I requested as much as I could in September, October, November for the select board to wake up and understand the responsibilities of the Board of Civil Authority Robert, for Election Day. Robert, um, can we move forward here, Robert? You're, um, you're, you're um, kind of hostage talking the meeting here, all right? The, 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 the issue right now- No, um, June, June, I'm, not, I'm, is, I'm, a, I'm a public citizen. No, 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 no. You're not what a about? Rochester resident, Robert. I'm an American. Uh, not of the town of Rochester, but you are a citizen of Vermont. Yeah, yeah. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. But the point I'm trying to make, if you'd let me just finish, is that the Board of Civil Authority on November 2nd. Robert, this is not the Board of Civil Authority meeting. This is a select board meeting. All right. You put it on the agenda to talk about this later on the meeting. And we put it in the agenda to talk about this later, what you want to talk about, all right? Thank you. So do I have a uh, motion to approve the minutes from the January 25th meeting? I second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we've got those minutes. And Robert, just hold your horses. We'll get to your questions to the agenda. Any updates she has on an ongoing business of the town? Um, we've got a lot of noise coming in here. June, do you want so to suggest uh, people yeah. mute themselves? Yeah, I was going to try and do that. Um, it looks like there's a bunch of noise coming from Sandy's um, cooking dinner or something um, in the background. Mute. I'll do that for you. Okay. If you want to say something, Tom or Sandy, just wave your hand and I'll unmute, unmute you. Okay, Joan. Oh, am I on? You're on. Oh, okay. Yep. I'll turn on my video too, so you can see me while I'm talking. Um, well, first, uh, before I get started, I have to say that um, I read a very nicely written article, I think it was by Martha in last week's um, Herald about all the activities that took place during um, uh, the start of 
COVID arriving at Park House and then the- uh, It was a group effort, but thank you. It was a group yes, effort. well, I, I'm complimenting you, Martha, on your nice writing and also on everybody who was involved with that effort. I was, was a what great- What I meant was the writing was a group effort too, Catherine Shankman and some others as well. Right. I just put okay. it together. Sorry. Anyway, thank you. just my kudos to everybody for all the wonderful work you did. It was just really impressive how everyone pulled together and um, made things happen there. Um, so moving on to the stuff I'm doing, not nearly as exciting. Uh, I'm working with Cooter to get ready for spring uh, FEMA road projects. I will probably put things out to bid. It'll be about five bids, six bids altogether, um, probably the beginning of April. Uh, and it'll include the retaining wall as well as about five different roads that need a significant amount of ditch work. Um, there's been a little bit of activity back and forth on the West Hill Bridge replacement design. Um, the, originally, our contract called for uh, the final designs to be um, submitted by now, but just because of you know COVID and um, usual difficulties associated that we've had in the past year or so, um, the design is taking a little bit longer, but right now it looks like they'll be delivered sometime mid-February. Worry. Um, doesn't really matter a whole lot at this point anyway, since uh, as you all know already, the uh, construction is not gonna take place until 2022. So there's still time to work out some last minute details on that, but we should be seeing those soon. Um, I'm still compiling documents for submission to FEMA so that we can get some, some money back. Um, it's gonna be a while. Um, Every time I check in with our FEMA representative, he's very helpful, but just says that things are uh, still being reviewed at higher levels. So we just have to wait for that process to continue. Um, the storm, the uh, town garage stormwater project is expected to go out to bid sometime this month. Um, that bid process is being handled by White River Partnership. But the, uh, the intent there is also to be ready to get things going uh, in April or as soon as um, conditions allow. And then last but not least, I've um, lined up the planting project. It's a small planting project on the Henry property that was associated with Bethel Mountain Road uh, rebuilding. So that's all I have to report for now. Excuse me, you said the Henry project was on Bethel Mountain Road? I, I didn't quite get that when I was writing. It's a tree planting um, project. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, questions, John, right at this time? I'm sorry, did you say something? No, I think, um, thank you, John. Okay, cool. okay. No, I said thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, you yeah. Um, um, Tony, do you have any um, updates? From We're still doing the porch pickup thing, and tomorrow at uh, 5.45, we have a trustees meeting, which will be, of course, on Zoom or whatever. Okay. Um, all right. That's some um, kind of status, steady state for the times we're in. And starting right. here from the highway to, yep, yep, more. No, I'm all set. Oh, uh, Is anybody else having trouble hearing Dune? Yeah, Dune, you're frozen. Joan, actually, um, you were talking about the 2020 circuit. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. You're cutting in and out, Dune. Your bandwidth is really low. Yeah, you might want to shut up your video. Yeah, I'm up. I just, I just um, turned on something. Well, let's see if that works. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, um, Joan, you um, have uh, the certificate of highway mileage report is due. Is that um, 
something we'll have prepared and ready for us to sign in the office there? Oh, uh, I, I didn't know that was in. I haven't I, been in the office much at all lately. Yeah. Um, but I can coordinate with Julie on that. Okay, great. great. I, do, I do have it. It's due this week and um, Cooter has finished filling it out. So I just have to submit it. But okay. I don't know if it's, I'll just have to have somebody review it, one of the select board members to review right. it. Okay. Great. And then we have um, on the new business, we have a request from the local Girl Scouts to um, do a, um, how they put it, a, a heart scavenger hunt in town. Did you guys read that that proposal? Do you have any comments on that, Frank or Pat? No, uh, activity is a good activity these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did read the proposal. The only thing I I say is just to uh, remind the remind them of the COVID distancing. That's about it. They didn't um, say much about that, but I think we should probably just make sure they're aware. And I'm sure they are, but I'm sure um, they are. But it's, what, Dan, could you just so that I could put it in the paper about what it is? Is it some sort of an outdoor activity or something? Or um, I I had to unplug my other computer, so I can't take it there. But Pat, I think you've got it in front of you, and you can um, give a little just a rundown. couple of sentences. I just wanted to know what it included. Maybe I thought it might be some sort of outdoor scavenger hunt or something. Well, let me let me read the message to you. Um, my name is Rachel Gregorian, and I am the leader for the lo Can you hear me? Yeah, leader, leader, leader for the local Girl Scout troop. We are trying to get our service badge this year that entails doing a bunch of projects for our community. The girls and I were wondering if it would be possible to set up a heart scavenger hunt throughout downtown Rochester. It would basically entail hanging or hiding hearts around the green and maybe in some storefronts if we talk to the business owners. We would like to put a little sign up stating the amount of hearts that people can search for. We're hoping families will go outside and see it is a fun way for us to know we have the town's it's a fun way to spend the day time outside around town. Also, just brighten someone's day. Let us know if we have the town's permission to do so. Um, I don't think there's any uh, prize for finding all the hearts. I think it, it's just an, an exercise for, for the just girls a, to get the warm, back. fuzzy thing. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pat. Okay. I can send that to you, Martha, if you'd like it. Okay, sure, if you have time. I, I, I just wanted to explain what it was, that's all. Okay, the, um, um, and Vic, you had something you wanted to talk about. There's a, a um, grant that you- Do you have permission to do it? I'm sorry, do you have, guys oh, have to- Yeah, I think we've, yeah, okay, formally, I guess we'll give permission. I move we give permission for them to, to do that with the appropriate COVID um, cautions. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, just no mint Girl Scout cookies. I can't do those. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take them. Um, so Vic, you want uh, some tag alongs or something? <laughs> Vic, you've identified a, a, a potential grant for a yeah. Uh, last office. November, I responded to a state survey to emergency management directors looking for. Uh, uh, potential grant project ideas. Um, and I submitted a request for consideration for a generator for the our emergency operations center, which is the town office building. And I got a note back, I forgot all about it. I got a note back last week saying this would probably qualify. So um, I got more information about it um, and attended a, a information conference call today. It's a uh, it's a FEMA program that flows through the state and then it's the state to municipalities. So this would be a, an application from the town if we were to pursue it. I would like to uh, work with Joan on this, if I could, Joan. Um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with this process, though I did learn that we would need to submit uh, three bids for the work uh, for the generator and for the associated installation costs. Mm -hmm. And it's due, it's all due on March 5th, which is not very long from now. Um, so uh, I would uh, be 
happy to uh, work on this uh, with you, Joan, if you uh, if you uh, might be available. I also sure. thought I would get in touch with uh, uh, Tom Schnabel and ask him to help in terms of just the specifications for what we need for a generator and his ideas about you know what that might look like, and then we could you know quickly hopefully put out bids to local companies to see who's interested in doing that work. Yeah, I'll be happy to work with you on that. Great. And say so you want to say something. I'm just wondering, is there, are there parameters within the grant as to how much money? Uh, no, it's just uh, based on, they, they didn't specify, it's based on what you request and they have to, and they want the bid proposals to verify that it's a reasonable amount. Oh, so we have to do the bidding before we actually do the bid. I have Correct. the application. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we need to get started on that soon then. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you material uh, that I have tonight, John. Maybe we can talk tomorrow sometime. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Um, um, the one thing I added to the agenda was a um, request from um, John Gorton, who we've given him permission to store his tractor in the old fire station for dealing with the, the town sidewalks. And, and he asked, if he is willing to pay the bill, if um, he could have the electricity hooked up to that building so he could put a block heater on his tractor. And um, that would require probably um, some evaluation to make sure that that is, is um, safe. I don't think we just turn that on without, because so with the, the heating unit and other pieces of equipment taken out of that building, there may be some loose wires hanging around, but. Uh, what do you, what's your guys thought on that? That that would have to be a a state inspected building, I think. On that, since how we disconnected the power on that, I I would think they'd have to go through and have it approved by an inspector because it's a municipal building. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that would entail, to be honest with you, but I'm sure it would be a little more than just more than him just paying the power bill. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can look into it. But <clears throat> so I guess, yeah, we could um, see exactly what we're talking about there and then um, see to what extent he is interested in that. Yeah. But, um, so basically, Frank, you're saying the building should be inspected by the state and now you guys will, will look into that? I, I think it would have to be in order to uh, have a meter plugged into that because it's a commercial. I don't think that Green Mountain Power would just come up and put a meter in there. Okay. You I can know. I can find out. I can call a couple people that I know and see what that, that would entail. All right. I'll take care of that. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. And now, Robert, thank you for your patience. It's your turn again. Um, have you had a chance to summarize in your mind exactly what, what you want to share with the board here? Can you hear me? Yep. OK. Um, Hendrick said that the town's BCA would formalize the town's policy. That was in 2018. Hendrick said that the town's BCA, Board of Civil Authority, would formalize the town's policy. That's written in the newspaper, not in the Herald. What, All the, right. for, the formalization of the BCA, which is responsible for voting stations, that we all we've all been through this, is is responsible for the polling station on yep. on November 2nd I want to ask the question to the select board and the board of civil authority at what day and what time did the board of civil authority wake up and understand that sadly I was correct Patty Harvey shared with me that oh Oh, we didn't get the response from the Secretary of State's office till Friday afternoon from Will Senning. This is something that the town, everyone here, I don't really care what political situation you're in. It, it, it is the responsibility for the Board of Civil Authority. 
But Dune, you said, quote, the towns said that the town's board of civil authority would formalize the town's policy. That was two years ago. And on the day before the 220 election, the board of civil authority approved the uh, voting station policies. But I want to go back to Frank because Patty mentioned him, thanking him for taking lead to make certain that it happened. So there's a, a few issues that I have to address. One is I go onto the, the website of Rochester and it says the officials, Dune Hendricks, Patty Harvey, Tom, or T Mr. S whatever. And uh, let me ask you this question, Martha and everyone else, Nancy, are the, the people that are the, the members of the Board of Civil Authority, are they considered officials quote unquote officials in the town of Rochester? Yes or no? Yes, they are. Yes, they're all elected officials. Yes. Okay, so why aren't they listed on the Rochester website to be in contact with? They're, they're not listed. It is the most important part of the select board's one thing, but the Board of Civil Authority has more authority than the select board. So why in God's world aren't the representatives of the Board of Civil Authority listed with contact numbers to contact? These are questions that I put out to, the, uh, to Jenny, uh, Jenny up at the State House today. It's like, this is part of the open meeting rule laws. And it's really important for everyone to just uh, take a breather and what say, is, wait a second. What but is, dude, what is dude. there, Nancy? It looks like that Nancy's got the town report open to the page that that has that information on. Well, if you're if you're a person or a family interested in, in, in investing in the town of Rochester and buying a home and mm -hmm. making certain that schooling is proper for their children, where do you think they're going to go? People outside of Rochester know what the boards of civil authorities know or are, or, and, yes. and, but you can't, you cannot find the board. Well, so, you would have to put a little effort into it, but I believe that you can find them, Robert. All okay, so if, call. okay. I think so, that, that they would probably call the town clerk and say, could you tell me who is on the board of civil authority? Oh, I, I, Julie, it, have you ever had anyone call you and ask you that other than Robert? Uh, I have people ask questions all the time. So that's it's yeah. a similar question as what he's asking. The, the question is, yeah. uh, the I could stand in front of Max Market tomorrow uh, and ask a uh, 100 people what the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester is, and 98% of them would say, I don't even know what you're talking about. But it's, yep. you, you can't just- force, You can't force feed that kind of, information to people if people are interested they would know how to answer that question if people aren't interested they wouldn't even know what you're talking about robert but guess so what it's, it's not our job to to demand that every person in the united states knows who we are you know we we respond to requests and we're here you know we're not hiding as much as you may think that we are but but, um, but, but, but that's a that's um I'll, you know, is, are they on the website? Should they be linked on the website? I, maybe, I, I don't know. I don't um, have it pulled up, so we can look into that. So we'll go into another situation uh, <coughs> with regards to the select board. I put out a question to you, Dune, uh, almost 10 days ago mm -hmm. about why special meetings, some special meetings are recorded in ORCA and others aren't. Mm -hmm. And, and that now falls into the Board of Civil Authority because you never answered my question. It was a very simple question. Why in God's world? Actually, I did answer your question, Robert. You did not. I have no reference to that. Uh, did you check your email today? Dune, I check my email a hundred times a day. All right, well. Well, what, what I'm anyway. saying is, is that the communication, whether it's the select board or the board of civil authority, 
and the addressing of those people public. They, they, any per person that takes the responsibility under oath to be on the select board or the board of civil authority should be listed on the webs, the town's website. It's public information under their oath. So I think your web, your, your website, I don't know who the webmaster is, but your website's a disaster. Okay. I, I, I spent a, a 45 so, minutes. So, okay, so we get the point. Um, and Zoom is run by the Chinese, but I think that it's, um, you know, are they able to find out who our board of civil <laughs> authority is? I bet they could if they wanted to. Um, the, I, um, I, I think that 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 question is. Uh, are you asking me that question? No, I'm just I'm just addressing the concerns that you brought up at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and you're you're requesting that we abandon the Zoom platform. I think that would be a great idea. I think that the town of Rochester and Bethel, Pittsfield, Stockbridge should all go on to Microsoft, so it's not on Zoom. It, and the okay. school children. The school children should not be sitting at home on a Zoom uh, classroom. It is not good okay. for our society. All right. So, and then the other thing that you just wanted to reiterate that people should be um, people should be respectful when they're on these meetings to each other and not have uh, um, negative comments on there. So that's that point is taken. It's uh, it's. <laughs> Yeah. It's not. It's not a negative comment. It's vulgarity. Okay, but the and point, if, the if, point if, is taken. The point but, we 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 hear you, and, and the point is is taken. Um, and I I think everyone that's on this meeting hears what you're saying. You know. Um, so I want to I want to uh, point this uh, comment to Frank Severy. Frank asked me, and it's quoted on Orca. And I I would recommend everyone that's pre present tonight. Go on to the ORCA meetings of the Rochester Select Board and the selected special <laughs> meeting recordings and listen to the quotes of people. Frank Severy said on ORCA, Robert, do you have a plan? This is prefacing election day. I want to make it clear to everyone on this meeting that my intention was to make certain for the good of the town of Rochester, that the Board of Civil Authority would take hold of election day rules so that, Frank, this was the plan, Frank, if you're listening, that after the election was completed on November 3rd, if the town of Rochester did not go through the Board of Civil Authority to approve the voting policy rules, every vote in that town, in that in your town, and your high school building would be null and void, according to state constitution, the town. I want okay. Frank to know that because you actually intimidated me saying, Robert, do you have something planned? The plan was if you don't heed to the Board of Civil Authority's responsibility, all votes in the town of Rochester as of the end of election day on November 3rd would be null and void. You could not send anything to the right. state house. But that we is follow not, through with that, Robert, and we did it properly. Yeah. yeah spending that's, so that's, um, that's a that's, that's it. Um, old history, and you've you've made your point and um uh, and whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. No, June, it's not old history, it's history waking up saying the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester needs to take much more. Your quote was in 218, and you were you quoted that you were going to formalize the town's policy on November 2nd. The town policy. Yep, we're I think constantly, it's constantly struggling to improve what we do in service to the town, Robert. Well, I think people should look up the definition of incompetency. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone else have anything? they would like to speak about before we move into executive session to discuss uh, issues about the school, high school building with our town council. I wanted to uh, make an announcement. Yep. 
I just wanted people to know that the absentee ballots for both the school vote and for uh, the town meeting are all ready to um, are ready to be requested. Great. And Thank Julie, you. can people just call up the office and uh, arrange to pick one up or get it mailed to them or how, what's the arrangement? I just yes. want to make sure. They, they can call. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So is this meeting being recorded on ORCID tonight? Uh, you look, can you look on your screen and, and answer that question for yourself, Robert? So this meeting's being recorded, but this the special meeting on November second wasn't. And then on that's it, right, that's right. Wh why was it not recorded? They didn't come. It's not um, well. Orca was invited, but they did not come. And if you track down the email that I sent you with the information from VLCT, the BCA meetings are not required to be recorded. It's only the select board meetings that are required to be recorded. So that, oh, that oh, is why. Oh. And, um, and I think you've had this information shared with you more than once, Robert. Uh, what, what, why was the special meeting on um, the last two special meetings recorded on ORCA and the day? Because we're um, special meetings, any select board meetings are required to be recorded. No, this was these were special meetings. Yes, special meetings is a select board meeting, Robert. The yeah. special meeting, the, the meeting on November second uh, was a special meeting, and you can't. So no one that can was find a it. special meeting of the board of civil authority, Robert. So you're saying that the select board records their meetings on ORCA, but the special meeting for the right, board, right. The board, so why is not the board of civil authorities meetings recorded? It's um not the the law. And um, we did actually give an invitation to ORCA, but they didn't come because perhaps they know that it was not the law and it was actually a, a very short and sweet meeting. You were there, I believe. Yeah. So I think you should have a conversation with Jenny Prosser up okay. at the State House. I know. You, you've, um, you've constantly um, in, um, let us know that people are about to call us and um, rain down the fury of the state, but it has yet to happen. And we have um, consulted with our legal sources and you know, this is how we're moving forward, Robert, so. Well, I would recommend to your attorneys to talk to the state house and ask why the town of Rochester doesn't record the, the Board of Civil Authority meetings on ORCA. What, what, yep. why, why is there no transparency? You were there. There are still meetings. You can find the meetings, minutes to those meetings. So there is transparency. And the minutes. Do, we're the going minutes. around in circles here, Robert. So Dude, you, say, you say that all the time. I'm not going around in a circle. I'm asking you a very simple question. And that is, why would the select board meetings be recorded on ORCA and then select special Robert, meeting? It's the law. Isn't that what you're trying to impress upon us? that we should follow the law and the rules of the state? No, I'm asking you a simple question, Dune. Well, you why did, I just are, answered. Okay, why? Robert, Robert, I think that um, unless you have some clear, one more sentence to sum up your displeasure or your suggestions, I'd like to, to um, um, move into executive session. You have uh, one simple statement that you would like to make? I want the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester to record all special meetings, the select board to record all special meetings on ORCA so that public okay. people that want to invest in this town can see what is going on. Okay, thank you. All right, um, and with that- um, Dude, can I just ask you a quick question about yeah. your executive yeah. session? Yeah. Is this something that, it says school building is what you'll be discussing. Is that yeah. something that you would be coming out with and um, that you would we'll, build? We'll have um, the, the minutes will have any resulting actions that would- Okay, so it's something I could call Julie at the town office about tomorrow maybe? Right, right. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Excuse thank me. you. All right, and anyone else, anything else you wanna to say tonight or we're good? Thank you all and- um, Good night. Good night. See you around town. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, folks. Yeah.